Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. The big mystery of William's absence remained unsolved at the time of this recording. At one point on Tuesday, some speculated that the change of plans was related to the death of Thomas Kingston, the husband of Lady Gabriella, an ex-boyfriend of Pippa Middleton, who passed away at 45. A family statement mourns him as a beloved husband, son and brother, highlighting his exceptional character and the profound shock of his loss. King Charles and Queen Camilla, along with Prince and Princess Michael of Kent, expressed their sorrow and extended heartfelt condolences. Kingston's death occurred in Gloucestershire under no suspicious circumstances. Married to Lady Gabriella in 2019 at St. George's Chapel, his passing is deeply felt by family, friends and the royal family. Royal sources say the death of Mr. Kingston was not connected to the Prince of Wales' absence from King Constantine's memorial. Lady Gabriella and Prince William are cousins. We'll update you with bonus episodes as news becomes available. Meanwhile, Prince Harry has been advised to take Donald Trump's recent comments on potential deportation very seriously, as reported by British broadcaster Piers Morgan. Trump's remarks, indicating a lack of intent to protect Prince Harry in the same manner as the current administration, have sparked concern. During a speech at the CPAC conference in Washington, D.C., Trump insinuated that if re-elected, he might consider deporting Harry. Trump expressed his disapproval directly to the Daily Express U.S., stating, I wouldn't protect him. He betrayed the Queen. That's unforgivable. He would be on his own if it was down to me. Piers Morgan in his column for The Sun writes, This is not the first time Trump has had a whack at Harry or his wife. When I interviewed him for Piers Morgan Uncensored in 2022, he scoffed. Harry is whipped. I won't use the full expression, but Harry is whipped like no person I think I've ever seen. I'm not a fan of Meghan, and I wasn't right from the beginning. I think poor Harry is being led around by his nose. And he predicted the couple would divorce, saying, It'll end, and it'll end bad. I want to know what's going to happen when Harry decides he's had enough of being bossed around. Or maybe when she decides that she likes some other guy better. I want to know what's going to happen when it ends, okay? In the same interview, he said the Sussexes should be stripped of their title, saying he has been so disrespectful to the country, and I think that he's an embarrassment. But this new threat to cut Harry off from any U.S. government support could carry serious risk to the Duke's U.S. ambitions. Only last week, Harry admitted he's been thinking of becoming an American citizen. But if Trump regains the presidency, he could stop that happening. And he might go even further and seek to have him deported, using the admitted drug abuse as an excuse, a fate that has befallen many others. So what next? If that nuclear option was pressed and knowing Trump as well as I do, his capacity for such acts of petty vengeance is unlimited. Harry would be forced to leave his idyllic Californian mansion and his adoptive country. But where would he go? Many suspect Canada would be the option. Former royal correspondent Michael Cole told GB News, Trump feels that by his actions, his books, his television programs, he has been disrespectful to the royal family and the Queen in particular. But there is a political element of this because Meghan Markle actually voted in the American presidential election of 2020. And you can bet your life she didn't vote for Donald J. Trump, but rather for his opponent, President Biden. It got through to President Trump that when he was making official visits to the UK, she was saying she was unwilling to meet him. And I think it's a fairly good bet that she may have political ambitions of her own, either on a state basis in California or maybe even nationally. That is yet to come. Royal commentator Josh Rom told Sky News Australia that Meghan and Harry are falling out with celebrities left, right and centre. The commentator explained, I find it almost ironic that Prince Harry and Meghan are trying to make it in Hollywood, but yet it's the King and Prince William that are receiving more support from the stage and screen. He also explained Meghan's role in the TV show Suits was elevated to the world stage when she married Harry. She was hardly Angelina Jolie. She wasn't at the top of the A-list circuit. Certain sources have told me before she was a royal that she and her former press representative would be meeting the tabloids to get Meghan into the press to further her career. This comes as other sources claim Harry and Meghan's popularity is on the rise as they become more comfortable working in the spotlight once again, following their three-day stint in Canada for the one-year-to-go Invictus Games event. Meghan Markle is set to harness the potential of her dynamic new podcast, moving beyond her initial ventures to share more personal stories and reflections. After parting ways with Spotify, Meghan has inked a deal with Lemonada Media to distribute the first season of her Archetypes podcast, while also developing a new series. According to sources close to the Duchess, this fresh endeavour will allow her to engage in some inner reflecting and explore aspects of her personal life alongside her guests.
Diverging from her previous approach, which heavily featured celebrity guests, Megan aims to shift the focus towards philanthropy and discussions that resonate with her academic inclination, moving away from purely entertainment-driven content. While the podcast will still feature some notable personalities, the primary goal is to delve into content that reflects her and Prince Harry's aspirations to make a significant impact in Hollywood following their departure from royal duties in 2020. Royal Insider Deep Crown tells us, If I were at Lemonada right now, I'd be seriously worried. This philanthropic angle Megan's pushing, it could end up a bigger mess than the Spotify deal. Nobody's exactly queuing up for more of her deep reflections. Bill Simmons might have hit the nail on the head about her not being too keen on taking advice. Execs should be on their toes with this pitch. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Diana Elsa, writing for the news.co.au, says, A new report revealing the shockingly tiddly amount of money that the Sussexes have actually been paid by Netflix, and it's about $129 million less than was previously reported. Cripes. The Daily Mail's Alison Boshoff has reported that in reality, the Sussexes have only banked $22.9 million from the streamer for their six-hour docuseries Harry and Meghan, an endurance exercise in how much self-pity and how many torp linen sofas one can stomach in a sitting. It was never the huge payday that the press reported, a well-placed source with knowledge of the deal told Boshoff. The $100 million number was always a newspaper figure. That $22.9 million is a far cry from all the supposed rivers of gold the Duke and Duchess were supposed to be splashing about in post Megxit as they embodied the American success story. Just a local lass, her hardy immigrant husband and their dream, and hey presto, a 16 Lou mansion, songs have been written about less. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice. And give us five stars on Apple if you like the show. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and Good Times. <laughs>